I thought for the longest time that the goal was to figure out a way to be willing to be uncomfortable, to be willing to get out of your comfort zone, away from, we didn't call them safe spaces then, but right, just to that, that willingness to venture out. That's what I thought the real coin of the realm was. But, but Mr. Huntington pulled me aside one day and said, it's not that exactly. What you got to do, Mike, is you got to figure out a way to love it. Embrace the suck, as the SEALs would say. That's what you need to do. You need to figure, first you need to identify the thing that makes you uncomfortable. Then you need to be grateful enough for the life that you have that you're willing to be uncomfortable. And then you have to figure out a way to love it. And then something interesting is probably going to happen for you. And I think, I think most everybody in this film can't prove it, don't know. It, it's why the stories all came out of this thing called The Way I Heard It. I wasn't there, Nick, you know, when the Emancipation was signed or the Declaration. I, I don't know. And so we're, you know, we take some liberties for sure. But, you know, when it comes to our history, it really is vexing to have so many experts in the same room who can't agree. It's unnerving. I think we're really unnerved today in general, right? Because whether it's medicine or, or politics or, or journalism, the, at every turn, we seem to be confronted with experts who are not on the same page. Maybe that's why we're profoundly disconnected. Maybe that's why we can't feel great about the progress we've made. Maybe we're getting such giant mixed messages from these fire hoses of information in disparate directions. We don't know which one to drink from. Do you think part of it is that our our leaders, uh, you know, and I'm thinking our political leaders, certainly our military leaders, you know, the the people who ran the Boy Scouts of America, they failed us in pretty profound ways. I mean, the Boy Scouts had a major uh, sexual pred predator uh, uh, controversy that they really kind of elided until yep. they their boots were really held to the fire. Uh, you know, when you think about the military adventurism of the 21st century, whatever else you can say about it is, you know, nobody was being honest about what we were trying to do and whether we were achieving it. Our politicians, and I don't mean this glibly, I mean this in a dark and serious way, are liars. You know, they they cannot tell the truth, even if, you know, they swear in front of judges and things like that. Um, how do we how do we get past that, um, you know, as as a citizenry? Yeah. Well, I mean, all of that stuff feels terribly relevant when when you're living in it, like when you're looking out at an elected official who's living in your time and betraying the public trust, you know, betraying your vote, breaking your heart, misspending your tax money. When, that, when those things happen in real time, we have a level of uh, righteous indignation that is both warranted, explicable and justified. But, but today it's, it's not that it's, it's that same feeling of outrage over men who made mistakes 260 years ago that weren't seen as mistakes 260 years ago. And there's something just so, so blithely grand about our superciliousness when we just look back and go, oh, oh no, not him. He did that 260 years ago. I don't care about all the good things he did. We're going to look at this and that statue has got to come down. It's got to come down. And if we don't have the nuance, if, if, if we don't have the wherewithal to ask this question, namely, what's going to happen 250 years from now? How are we going to be remembered, Nick? What are our great, 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 great greats going to look back and say about the Gillespies, those meat eaters? What the hell were they thinking? <laughs> those pet owners. Those pet oh, owners. Oh, what? Yeah. How, how dare you? Yeah. And um, look, fill in the blank. Abortion. What? Um, given all of this, are you? Uh, you know, are you optimism, or what? Or what gives you optimism, uh, other than the occasional upgrades at the uh, Four Seasons or the Ritz? Well, Carlton there's that. Yeah. There is that. Um, I'm, 
I'm, you know, I had this conversation earlier today with somebody, and I think I made up a, a word that I really like. I, I was teetering back and forth between skepticism and optimism. We were talking about AI, and I said, you know, I think I'm, I think I'm skeptimistic. <laughs> And they were like, oh, that's terribly clever. And I said, I don't know about it. It's terribly clever. But the more I think about it, it's, it's, it's the answer to your question. It's the, it's, the, uh, it's the comfort that you get when you know that, it has, that it's going to get better, but it's got to get worse first. It's like it's, it's the splat. Sometimes things have to go splat before everybody kind of gets the memo. And I don't, I don't know what that means in this case exactly. And I'm afraid there, there probably won't be one universal event that we can all look at and go, yep, well, there you go. There's your splat. Now we can all get back to being sane. It, it'll, it'll probably happen in dribs and drabs, splatters, if you will. 